Hello and welcome to this film about the effect of temperature changes on chemical equilibrium systems. Hopefully you've had a look at um, the practical um, film on this sort of subtopic. So you've seen the effects that temperature can have on equilibrium system. You might even have seen some of these experiments in class. Okay, in this film we're going to talk about the principles um, that um, we need to think about when we're considering what effect a temperature change will have on an equilibrium system. So we'll need to consider whether the forward and backward reactions are endothermic or exothermic. And once again, we're going to try and include collision theory in our explanations. Okay. Um, the effect on the graphs we'll come to later, and that will be the next film. Okay. So what is the effect on rate of temperature? Okay. So what temp what effect does temperature have on the rate of a chemical reaction? Well, this goes back to our collision theory, and you might remember seeing this um, molecular energy distribution for um, samples of a, a substance at different temperatures. Okay, if we um, shade the area under the graph um, beyond a certain energy, then we can see the number of particles or the total percentage of particles that have at least that much energy. Okay, so if we call this the activation energy, for example, so this is how much energy particles will need in order to make a collision successful and lead to a reaction, then we can see that as the temperature goes up, the percentage or the overall proportion of particles with at least the activation energy is gradually increasing. This means that for any chemical reaction, whether it's a forward or backward one, whether it's endothermic or exothermic, an increase in temperature will increase the rate because there's a greater, uh, a greater proportion of particles with enough energy to react. Okay, Not only are they colliding more often because they're moving faster, but a greater proportion of those collisions will lead to a reaction. Okay, So in other words, temperature will always affect rate and it will always affect rate in the same way. It will always increase it. Let's have a look at um, how we can represent enthalpy changes in chemical equations, and in particular looking at a couple of reversible systems. Okay, here is the Harbour process, um, which we've looked at before. Okay, what this tells us here is that the enthalpy change for this process is minus 92 kilojoules per mole. Now, if we're told the enthalpy change after an equation, this by default refers to the forward reaction. So this is telling us that the enthalpy change for this process here is minus 92 kilojoules per mole. In other words, this forward process is exothermic. And that, of course, tells us that the backward process must be endothermic. In fact, it must be endothermic by the same number of kilojoules for every mole. Okay? So by convention, if you see delta H equals after, a sub after an equation, it's talking about the forward reaction. There are different ways of representing this. Okay, so I could maybe write N2 plus 3H2 turns into, reversibly, 2NH3. Okay, and because this reaction is releasing heat in the forward direction, I could write plus 92 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and this is a kind of waste way of doing things, which we sometimes see. It's a little bit confusing because it look, makes the enthalpy change look positive. Okay, but what they're actually trying to do here is to make this energy one of the products of this forward reaction. Okay, so in order to get the backward reaction to happen, we have to put in 92 kilojoules per mole. When the forward reaction happens, we release that amount. Okay, it's a little bit confusing. You just have to look out to see whether that delta H symbol is there or not. Because if this said that delta H is equal to 92 kilojoules per mole, then that would mean that the forward reaction was endothermic. Okay, but obviously they wouldn't be able to write this for this particular process because the forward reaction is exothermic as it happens. Okay, um, this uh, little box here just shows us um, the nitrogen dioxide, dinitrogen tetroxide, tetroxide equilibrium represented in two different ways. So with the N2O4 on the left and with the N2O4 on the right. And all this is basically saying is that the enthalpy change here, as you can see, the sign of it depends on how we write the equation. So this is just emphasizing really the point that this enthalpy change refers to the forward process and not to the backward process. Okay, so 
this forward process is endothermic. That same process here would also be endothermic because this forward process is exothermic. Okay, so anyway, just a few things there to note about what uh, what information we can get about enthalpy changes from the numbers that are written around a chemical equation. Okay, so moving on finally to how will a system oppose a change, let's just look at um, this example that we've just had where nitrogen and hydrogen are turning into ammonia. Okay, and we decided that the forward reaction was exothermic and the backward reaction was endothermic. Okay, now remember, Le Chatelier's principle says that if we increase the temperature, the system will try to lower it because it's trying to reduce the effect of any change that we've imposed, okay? Or in other words, it's trying to minimize any change that we've put upon the system. Okay, so if I raise the temperature, the system will try to lower it. Which of these reactions lowers the temperature? Well, endothermic reactions get cold. So if I raise the temperature, the system will favor the endothermic reaction to try and lower the temperature again. That does not mean that the um, forward reaction has slowed down at all. In fact, they've both sped up. Because remember what we are saying, collision theory tells us that if the kinetic energy of the particles increases, they're going to collide more often, and a greater proportion of them will have enough energy to react, and so on and so forth. Right. So in other words, both these reactions will speed up, but the endothermic reaction will speed up more. If I cool this system down, Okay, so if I cool this system down, this system will try to heat itself up. How does it do that? It promotes the exothermic reaction. That doesn't mean that the exothermic reaction will speed up, but in relation to the endothermic reaction, it will. They'll both slow down because fewer particles have enough energy to react, but the exothermic reaction won't slow down quite as much as the endothermic one because Le Chatelier's principle is telling us that this system's tried to warm up. So if I cool it down, exothermic direction, greater yield of ammonia, position of equilibrium shifts to the right. If I heat it up, endothermic reaction is favoured, position of equilibrium shifts left, and the yield of ammonia falls. Okay, so they are the principles behind the effect of temperature changes on equilibrium systems. A great place to go next would be to the film about temperature changes, the effect that temperature changes have on the rate, time, and concentration time graphs. Okay, so that's your next port of call, I would recommend.